In this video, we're going to see the process for standardizing a proportion, a sample proportion. The process is a little bit different from that of standardizing a sample mean. We're going to look at the differences and build a template for standardizing sample proportions when it's appropriate. The first thing to point out is that we do need a sampling distribution of a sample proportion that can be approximated with the normal distribution. That requires that the sample size times the population proportion be larger than five. Also, one minus the population proportion times the sample size must be greater than five. Our example will certainly meet those requirements. To begin, let's specify a nature of a population proportion. So suppose that a certain process is well understood and that the population proportion is 25%. Also, suppose that we will be taking sample sizes of 100. This means that n times the population proportion, pi is a symbol that's often used for this, will be 25 and 1 minus the population proportion times n will be 75. So we are well above 5 on both sides. Further suppose that you were to obtain in that sample of 100 30 successes or 30 yes responses. How would we calculate the sample proportion? That would simply be equal to the number of successes divided by the sample size. So in this case our sample proportion would equal 30. Now the engine for standardization is going to be separate from our sample proportion calculation. So um, they will operate independently. The first thing that we need in order to standardize a normally distributed variable is its average. And the average of the sample proportion is the population proportion. It is an unbiased estimator. We will also need the standard error of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion in order to get from something that is normally distributed to something that is standard normal. So to begin, how do we get the standard error of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion? That will equal, in the numerator, the population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion. And then in the denominator, the sample size. And finally, we're going to take the square root of the whole thing, which is the same as raising the whole thing to the 0.5 power. So in this case, the standard error of the proportion laid out here is 4.33%. Now we'll also need to specify a hypothetical proportion. So the, the question that we're answering here is, in, if in population, the population proportion, which is being uh, normally being estimated is 25%, if we were to sample randomly with 100 observations, what is the probability? The question we're gonna answer is, what is the probability that we get a random sample with a sample proportion of 21%. And in order to answer that question, we first need to standardize. And just as we have done before, um, we're going to take this normally distributed sample proportion, we're gonna shift it to the left by its own mean, and we're going to rescale it by its own standard error. If you'd like to understand how the process works, you can click the link that's now appearing. So, first things first, let's take the hypothesized value and let's shift it to the left by its own mean. And then let's divide the result of that by the standard error of the sample proportion in order to get something that's not only normally distributed but standard normal or distributed according to the Z distribution. Next, we're going to examine this z-score using the uh, calculations for the area under the standard normal distribution. Um, for some insight into this process, you can click on the link that is now appearing.
to find the area to the left of negative 0.92 under the standard normal distribution, we will use norm.s.dist. We will select our z-score and we will use true to indicate that we are looking for the cumulative area. So the probability that in a population with this proportion, if we draw a sample size 100, that we will get a sample with a sample proportion of less than 21% is 17.78%, which is the same as a probability of getting a z-score less than negative 0.92. Now to find the probability that the random sample drawn has a p-value that is greater than 21%, we simply need to take the entire area under the distribution and subtract from it the probability that the sample proportion is less than 21. So the probability with a population proportion of 0.25 and using a sample size of 100 that we draw a random sample and get a proportion that is greater than 21 percent is 82.22 percent. Now there are some other probabilities we want to be able to use. We want to be able to see the probability of getting a sample proportion between two values. So for our high proportion we will use 0.3 and we need to standardize this so we will take that value and subtract from it the population proportion and divide by the standard error of uh, the sample proportion and hit enter. So getting a sample proportion equal to 30 percent uh, is akin in terms of probability to getting a z-score of 1.15. So now to find the probability that p falls between 0.21 and 0.3 for a sample of 100 when the population proportion is 0.25. What we need to do is start with the larger of the two areas. That is equals norm.s.dist. So we will find the area to the left of the high z-score indicating true for cumulative and we will subtract from that norm.s.dist or the area to the left of the low z-score indicating true for cumulative. And so we get the result that when the population proportion is 0.25 and the sample size is 100, the probability of drawing a random sample and getting a proportion that falls between 0.21 and 0.3 is 69.81%. Now the probability that the proportion falls outside of that interval is, as you might expect, equal to the area under the entire curve minus the probability that the sample proportion falls within that interval. Both these two areas and these two areas should, should sum to one. And if you're having difficulty going from the z-scores to the areas, again, check out the uh, linked video for working with the standard normal distribution. Now, the only thing that we have left to do is to work backwards, that is to go from a probability such as 95% and to end up with a z-score which will then lead to the corresponding sample proportions. Uh, the function that we use to go from a probability to a z-score will begin with uh, the z-score such that 95% of the observations fall below that z-score is equal to norm.s norm.s.inverse, inverse going not from z-score to probability but going backward from probability to z-score. Highlight your probability, close parentheses, enter. So 95% of the observations fall below a z-score of 1.6, roughly 5. And because the z-distribution is symmetric around 0, it must be the case that 95% of the observations fall above the negative of the above z-score or negative 1.6 roughly 5.
Now, the, the only thing we have left to do is to use these z-scores to get to a sample proportion. And the way that we will do that is to go the opposite direction of what we did when we standardized. When we standardized, we started with something normal, shifted it to the left by its own mean, and then rescaled it by its own standard error. In this case, we are going to start with the z-score, scale it up by its standard error, and then add it or shift it to the right by the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. And we will do that for both numbers in order to establish in order to stamp, establish um, the z, the p scores that go along with these z scores. So now we know that 95% of the sample proportions will fall below 0.321 in this situation, and 95% of the sample proportions will fall above 0.179 in this scenario. I have a button here that will clear the input from this table so that you can start another problem. If you would like to see how to add that button, simply click the link that is appearing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.